Hey, Scott, Jared from the Mercury, mate. Hey, Jared. Appreciate it. Thank you. You as well, Clint, obviously. Um, Scott, I guess, how are you feeling, mate? Uh, well, a few things. Um, uh, Melbourne United is our champions, and they showed the heart of a champion tonight and got dealt a, a bad blow with uh, Chris being out. I wish he was actually in this game. Uh, and um, Dean's are just, uh, I say it a million times, a hell of a coach. They got a hell of a squad over there, and um, we're just humble uh, to be able to pass through them. And we're better for it uh, in the long run of playing a game like this and a series with them. And um, hats off to them, they're fantastic. Um, our guys were <laughs> gritty, tough, never give up. Um, just incredible effort for our, our group and um, to defend the island again and um, impact the state like these guys have done um, is just a fantastic thing for our group and, and the state. And yeah, I don't know what to say other than we're just blessed to be in this position and, and humbled by it. Has it sunk in, Scott, yet? Um, the first time a, an expansion side has ever made the NBL Grand Final series in its first year. Um, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, you know, obviously it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. Um, I think it's hugely important, I think, for the league. I think it was just a great story throughout the year in general. Um, I think we've impacted um, Tasmanian basketball for kids and and young females growing up and children and to rally around this sport and embrace it. And um, it's so impactful and sports are so impactful and um, just a huge um, moment, I think, for Tasmania in general um, in a short period of time. You, we've touched on it multiple times. You started the season two and six. Um, what does it say about the team to, to start there and now be where you are today? Well, they never wavered. You know, we, we, we said it multiple times when we were two and six, and we had three or four games that we were right there to win, and we kept saying, we're close, we're close, and, and no one wavered, and we kept doing the work and kept defending and kept going through our practices and going through our structure. And gradually, like I said before, guys started to get a little more comfortable in the roles, and our defense was steady and strong uh, throughout the season, and that's what it was built on. And um, yeah, we just we just stuck with the we stuck the course, and it's a credit to these guys of just to buy. And again, you know, I'm so appreciative of this group. You know, they um, gave me the privilege um, to coach them and trust me with their careers this year um, in a new adventure. And um, this guy right here next to me was uh, one of the key guys that I wanted with me um, to go on this trip with me. And um, his leadership and Weeksy's leadership have been fantastic with the group, and uh, it's a big moment for us, obviously. You've been very open of how proud you are of the team this year, Scott. Uh, what, what emotions, I guess, are running through you now, and it's particularly when the siren went? Um, you know, it's obviously unbelievable, and the first thing that ran through my mind was obviously my wife and daughter back home um, who were up in the middle of the night these last two or three weeks watching every moment and texting me after every game. and. Um, um, just being able to share that. I had a little quick FaceTime with them right after the game on the floor, which was incredible. And I wouldn't be here without them. And, um, you know, they saved me when I was about ready to pack it in here uh, and go home. Absolutely. And Clint, to you, mate, congratulations. How are you feeling? Stoked, mate. I mean, <laughs> the amount of work and effort this group's put in, it's. They deserve it. And to be on the biggest stage in professional sports competing for a championship. I mean, I mean, you would have seen their faces, the, the jubilation. I mean, they're, they're wrapped, mate. They're, we know we're not done, but to come this far with the group and the minimal time that we've spent together, um, they're, yeah, they can't wait to, to get back out there next week. and. Sure as hell, I can't wait to, to get back on that home floor back in Hobart because uh, that place is going to be rocking again. Clint, when you signed on with the Jack Jumpers, could you envision anything like this in the first season? Uh, there definitely wasn't a, a focus on this. A lot of a lot of our talks and and focus was built around built around building a sustainable foundation, a sustainable culture where it may take three, four years to put that foundation in. And and we knew as a group we may not get the reward straight away, but we knew maybe five, ten years down the track, the guys that followed after us would we'll, get to uh, I compete for championships and have 17, 18 win seasons. But 
this group has just said, stuff that, let's try and do it straight away. And um, yeah, I guess you've, you've seen, um, I guess the work we've put in, the changes we've made and, and how we play. But I guess one thing that hasn't changed is the determination to, to play for each other and invest in each other. Thanks, Lynn. Scott, just one more from me. Sure. Um, J.A. put in a huge performance tonight, scored 30 odd. He, he yep. started a bit shaky, but continued to be aggressive all night. What did you make of his performance in such a vital game? Yeah, I mean, I, I was hoping all along in the last um, game or two, you know, um, that he was going to break out at some point. He wasn't quite there, and um, you know, he had some frustrations going on here and there, and um, uh, he just came out on fire in the second half, and we continued to go to him, and, and that's why he's here. And uh, he got level-headed again and got back into what we needed to be doing, and uh, made big play after big play for us, and, and obviously swung the tide uh, towards us. So, um, yeah, an unbelievable second half for us. Um, but just a grit and grind deal by all of our guys to just do the little things uh, at the moments that really is really important to us. Thanks, fellas. That's all from me. All tomorrow. Thanks, Jared. Go ahead, Mick. No, hi, Scott. Hi, Cliff. Um, Scott, you mentioned you're ready to pack in and go home. Can you talk us through a little bit about how it went from those feelings to now playing in the grand final? <laughs> well, when you're away from your wife uh, for 14 months and um, your daughter for 18 months, um, the last month before the blitz started, it, it was getting difficult for me just mentally to see if I'd ever actually get home to see them. And um, the last game after Cairns and the blitz, I drove back from Launceston to um, Hobart, and I was basically done. I don't know if Clint remember, but he tried to get in the car with me because I left so quick, and I told him no. And I drove two and a half hours, and all I was thinking about was just going to the airport and, and, and going home. I. I just mentally spent myself and um, probably wasn't great to be around in general, but um, yeah, I was just crashing and burning. And luckily in a, a few conversations and um, I just held on and the borders opened up and there was something at the end of the road to know that they were coming in the market. But um, in my wildest dreams, when I went to Perth, uh, I never thought I'd be here for almost two years and never be home um, to see a house, I've, a brand new house I've built that I've never seen or walked in. and missed a lot of different things. Um, and like I said, my wife and daughter, um, you know, they kind of saved me uh, to get over here and um, got me mentally back to where I should be. And uh, ever since that, it's been, it's been incredible. And um, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Hey, a bit of a carrot at the end, mate, for all, for all that struggle. Can you talk a little bit about the way that you um, actually executed to beat United tonight? Can you talk us through that and what you did? <laughs> Um, I think, you know, we just stayed true to ourselves. Uh, there wasn't a lot of big game-changing things happening here that um, uh, we were switching around or trying to solve problems. We were trying to solve little problems uh, with some of our things with offense like they were doing. But it just came down to us um, defending and doing what we've hanged our hat on. And I've said all along, your defense will travel. It will always give you a chance to win on the road in the fourth quarter if you're doing the right things. And um, um, it was my mindset from day one when I, you know, started to put this team together to be in the top four defensively, and, and I thought it would be good enough to get to where we are today, actually. And, um, you know, they're just a heck of a team, and just, again, it was just, you know, Detroit Pistons, New York Knicks, just banging heads against each other and just seeing who was going to stand last. And, uh, uh, like I said, they have the heart of a champion over there, and they were, they were incredible. Uh, Shea Ely was unbelievable. And, Jack White on the glass, and Dean, like I said before, is just a tremendous coach. So it was an honor to play against them here. Um, and um, yeah, we're happy to be moving on, obviously. And Josh Adams had that little moment before half time where he got called for that offensive foul, and you kind of, he was drawing with the ref, and you took him out and tried to get him to refocus. It looked like he sort of stopped as everyone went down the race and kind of soaked in the blues. Is that, is that what happened? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I did take him out, but I, I didn't see anything on the bench. I'm too focused on the game. And, you know, one of the things with our group is our values and uh, us rallying around each other and holding on to each other in difficult moments. And we said all along in this series that at some point we're definitely going to get in the mud and they're going to get in the mud. And this is a team that's going to be able to navigate to get out of that the quickest that's going to have a chance to win. And, um, you know, what transpires on the court or off the court, these guys rally around each other and pick each other up, and we just kept pulling them along with us. And um, he responded in the second half. Thanks, James. Good win. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mick. Any final questions? Uh, we're all done. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.